I want to call Honorable Chinam Jawana to give, give us a call of role of honor. To call our role of honor as we gather here to launch this historic document of all our hope. Let us hasten to say we do it amid uh, our sorrows and pains as we reflect that the nation is maimed, Zimbabwe is bleeding. We lost lives and lost dearly. Let me call upon our role of honor. Our iconic Dr. Richard Morgan Changrai, whom we have just lost. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Not forgetting the legendary Amai Susan Nyarazo Changirai. Of late, we have since lost Lida Pachedu, Roy Bennett, and wife Hida. The old role of honor goes on. We have Senator Patrick Kombai, Mr. Mfandae Zawowe, Professor Eliphas Mukonwe Shuro, Lenmo Judah Jongwe, Chigaga Crispen Chimsoro, Machipisa Elliot, Majoni Simanja, Moyo Henry, Tapera Wiseman, the list goes on to a number of over 297, lest we forget. As we end these proceedings of the day, let us uh, invite you to go through our gallery behind you and see through the path that we have traveled as a children of Zimbabwe that have been so painful and that we need hope to erase all our tears. I thank you, Mr. President. I think it's important to note that the people that caused or created the role of honor, the people that participated in disappearance, the people that are on the role of honor today are still in Zimbabwe and are still in power. The people that were instrumental in the abuse of the people, violence in the country, are still in power. Therefore, as Zimbabweans and as opposition leaders, we need to stand up with courage and determination, raise our voice to make sure that this will never be repeated again in the coming elections. To get the background, the context of this, let us invite Honorable TBT to come forward. GC Alliance uh, Advocate Honorable Chamisa, the principals of the MDC Alliance here in present, uh, members of uh, the respective uh, political parties that constitute the MDC Alliance, members of the diplomatic uh, corp that are here present, members of uh, our civic society, friends and partners uh, that are here, I've seen uh, friends from the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions, friends from the Housing uh, uh, Civic Society, uh, fellow Zimbabweans, uh, comrades and friends. Uh, today is a, is a great day for us in the MDC uh, family as we uh, put uh, on the table uh, what we consider are the necessary and sufficient uh, conditions for a free and fair election that will take place in 2018. Uh, most of us Zimbabweans here present will not know that uh, when we do go to the election in uh, July or August of this year, this in fact will be the 35th, number 35 election uh, since independence. That means on average we've had an election every three years since uh, 1980. But all of us will agree that those elections have been mere uh, 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 lipstick uh, elections serving a nominal commitment to and a normative commitment to non-existent uh, democracy. So we intend to make the 2018 election a substantive election that will make a difference uh, in our lifetime. All of us know that the 2018 election is the election of our lifetime is the election of our lifetime. This is more so given the events that unfolded in our country in November of 2017. So we have a duty, we have an obligation to ensure that we return our country to legitimacy. And as a part of that infrastructure, as, as part of that roadmap to legitimacy, 
the 2018 election offers a fundamental opportunity for our country to begin uh, afresh. We have gone through vicious contested elections. The role of honor that was read out this morning by uh, Honorable Chinanzavana is set. Uh, many of you who don't know her, uh, her own story as an individual is shocking. Uh, she spent a month at Chikurubi a maximum uh, prison where they did speak about things to her when she was carrying her own child. Those episodes of violence, of displacement, of delegitimization should never happen again uh, in, our, in our country. So in the document that we uh, launched uh, this afternoon, we are making and delivering one message. The days of electoral authoritarianism are over. The days of pretending to have elections, of putting lipstick on elections is over. We want a Zimbabwe, a shared Zimbabwe, where the voice of the ordinary person, the voice of the ordinary citizen can be heard through the ballot box. And that those who are in power know that they are ultimately accountable to the citizen, to the Wananji, to the Walalawoi, because the Walalawoi has got power uh, in, the ballot, uh, in the ballot box. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a great occasion. It's, it's a great occasion uh, for, for us. Uh, we, we, we are very mindful. And it's very strange. I was talking to uh, President Chamisa that it's very strange that we are doing these things when he's not uh, there. He might not be here uh, physically, but we know that uh, uh, in spirit and in soul, he's here uh, guiding us. So I want to thank everyone who has come and joined us. I want to thank everyone. You, you see what is happening in our rallies. People are part of our struggle. People are sharing our history. People are understanding this chapter that we have begun uh, with uh, uh, Nelson Chamisa. Uh, thank you very much, Ziko Mukwambir. Nelson Chamisa. I call upon our president to come and present the document to you. Honorable Chamisa. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Committee, Senator, uh, National Chairman. Thank you. May be seated. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I wish to take this opportunity to acknowledge our senior leaders here present. I wish to acknowledge the entire leadership, Vice President Missouri, and the entire Standing Committee of the MDC. T uh, leaders from uh, various alliance uh, partners and uh, the principals here present. I see representatives, but I also see President Biti. Um, I'm sure you on behalf of uh, Professor Ngume, Raguchu to President. Uh, is on behalf of uh, um, uh, Ambassador Mutambara. I also see um, on behalf of South Kwinje, um, I also want to acknowledge our members of the Diplomatic Corps here present. I've seen a couple of them uh, in your Midist, we want to acknowledge you, leaders of the civic movement in Zimbabwe. Um, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, today is a very important day, a day we are not supposed to be having, because under normal circumstances, we are not supposed to be talking about the electoral environment, if things were okay. The reason that we are here gathered today is in itself a testimony that yes, we have challenges, yes, we have problems, and those problems have to be resolved. You are aware that in 2002, Dr. Richard Morgan Changrai, our icon, challenged the electoral results. When he challenged the elections in court, the outcome of that challenge has not yet been determined. And now we're in 2018. Almost uh, 16 years later, the matter has not been heard. A determination has not been handed down. What it tells you is that we have a serious crisis in the country. President Shangri is no longer there, and it's no longer of any value to us to even talk about 2002 because we've had successive elections. That is the problem we have in this country. Not only that, we've heard from Maishina Nzoana the report that she gave indicating the problems we have in this country. People who have died, in fact, that role of honor is an understatement. We have over 500 people who perished at the hands 
of the state on account of political diversity and the fact that they just dared to say they think and see things differently. That was an invitation to death. That was an invitation to hazard and risk. And those are the problems we have had in this country. So this document, which is a very important document, is a response to various issues in terms of the electoral environment, which is contaminated, in terms of the electoral context, which is contaminated, in terms of the history of our country. You are aware that in this country, we have had change of guard on account of uh, no elections. What you then call it is something that uh, has been a point of discussion. But it's clear that uh, Mr. Mnangagwa is not an elected president. He's attempting to be elected. Unfortunately, he's unelectable. And I'm not so sure what his remedies and options are under those circumstances. Was for you to be elected, you must be electable. Now, his record shows that he, can, he can't be elected. Even if he wants to be elected, he can't be electable. So that is more the reason why we have pushed for the document that we are launching today, which document is very important. I must make reference to what was said by the AU Electoral Observer Mission. It indicated that um, in 2013, they noted that ZEC printed 8.7 million ballot papers, 35% above the number of the registered voters in Zimbabwe. It was significantly higher than the international best practices, where you have 5 to 10%. And it raised concerns of accountability of these unused ballots. However, it was the wish of the AU Electoral Observer Mission that there would be an accounting of the ballots to the satisfaction of stakeholders and all interested parties. To date, it has not been done. And this is why our issue on the ballot papers is so important. Because this is why we see Mr. Mnangagwa's newfound gospel, chapters and verses, are that there has to be free and fair election. When we know that he does not believe in free and fair election, when we know that he is not committed to that free and fair election. The AU Observer Mission went on to say, the function of a public broadcaster is very central in all elections. In terms of the AU Charter of 2007, it has to provide a platform for airing of political messages and news coverage emanating from various political contestants. However, in Zimbabwe, the national broadcaster tended to provide an in-depth coverage and live coverage to a single political party, and you know the political party. Has this changed? Has this changed? If anything, it has gotten worse, because now you have it. over and above the live coverage, you have this song from Japreza, Kutongwa uh, Kwaro. Uh, which is going to be changed very soon to be Kutongwa <laughs> Kwaro. Now, I must turn to our document. It has 10, 10 issues that we are saying these are deal breakers in terms of the election. If these things are not sorted out and solved, I must say and I have the confidence of the leadership supporting all the alliance principles and the political parties and the people of Zimbabwe. If these issues are not resolved, we are not going to boycott an election in Zimbabwe because we are the players in the election. But we have said if these issues are not there, there will be no election in Zimbabwe. It takes two to tango. ZANU-PF cannot tango alone. If they wish to tango alone, we must teach them the definition of a tango. It has to be a tango of two. And there must be a credible alternative in this country. And this is why we are saying, yes, let bygones be bygones. We have said, I oh, will boycott elections. We will not do this if things are not sorted out. But this time around, we will not boycott an election. We will not have an election. It's either a credible election or there is no election. 
and we are not saying this thing begging because we are the majority stakeholders being a dominant political party zan pf is now a minority in fact the lagos faction is a minority we are the dominant political establishment is the mdc alliance so whatever we want to see must also be put on the table if zan pf are not able with certain things we know that their grievance, if they have any electoral grievance, is that they are not supported by the people. But that is not an issue to raise for purposes of credible elections. They must go to the people and explain why we have had 37 years of failure, 38 years of disappointment, 38 years of undermining the gains of the liberation struggle. Those are their issues. So we have 10 peace demands. And we are saying that these are peace demands because it's all about peace in Zimbabwe. But peace is an acronym for a plan and environment for a credible election in Zimbabwe. So peace is an acronym, P-E-A-C-E. -E. P, a plan, E, an environment, okay? For a credible election in Zimbabwe. So the plan we have, is a very straightforward plan. It gives you a contextual analysis of our problems in summary. But more importantly, it touches on the 10 key peace demands that we are making. And those are the ones that I'm just going to go through quickly. Then we launch the document and we allow uh, other processes to unfold. In terms of our document and what we have done, we have already given this document to the SADC uh, Observer Group. We have already given this document to the AU. In fact, another document is going to uh, President Kagame in Rwanda. We are going to make sure that this document is in all the offices of the heads of state on the African continent and indeed the entire world. To say that this election has to be a free and fair election. <laughs> but before we also go there, we have already said we want to go and see Mr. Mnangagwa and allow him to benefit from the osmosis of ideas and the wisdom that we are giving him <laughs> from this document. So we are going to go and also table the document for his own appreciation of the things that have to be corrected. And of course, Zach, um, the 10 issues that we have are in summary as follows. The first one is the issue of the independence of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. We are not convinced that the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission is entirely independent. Why do we say so? There has not been any explanation of the resignations of Zek Chairperson Makaram and the replacement by Chigumba. Why was it done? What were the circumstances that has not been furnished to the nation? And we smell a red, and not just a red, but a big red in terms of their conduct and their behavior, especially in the context of the factions around La Costa and G40. There's also the resignation of uh, Chigumba, Chigwamba, the chief elections officer, being shipped away from the ZEC. Not that we had confidence in her, but just that movement ahead of elections tells you a story. So the issue of the independence of the Electoral Commission and its prof professionalization is very important, particularly when one has regard to the percentage of people who have been in the military ranks or who are in the military ranks who are serving in the Secretariat. We have done an audit of a person by person individuals who are serving in the Secretariat. Some of them are spooky faces and spooky characters who take spooky instructions from spooky organizations. What do we mean? We need a chlorination of the ZEC Secretariat so that it is manned by professional people with the concurrence and agreement of the various political stakeholders. We are not comfortable. It's like Guana, who is now the chief elections officer, is that same man who was part of the meticulous verification of elections in 2008. And we have no confidence in that kind of uh, a character. It's just like Chueshi, who we'll spend a lot of time doing the verification. So the Secretariat is very important. Number two is the auditing of the BVR voters from. We have 
insisted that we need an independent external auditing of the BVR. Why do we need an external auditing of the BVR? You are aware that we have registered over 5.3 million. But we want to ensure that there's not been any preloading or postloading of data on account of manipulation by ZANU PF or their functionaries. So the issue of a voter's role that is signed off is very important. We know that there's a deduplication process that is underway, but we're also aware that there's going to be an independent uh, um, verification of the names as and when the validation is open. But we want to make sure that we deal with the people who are registered. For example, in Midlands, we have it on good authority from our intelligence sources that they were registering people who are underage and we're investigating that matter to make sure that we deal with them. But then the unfortunate thing is that those whom they registered hoping that they will vote for them will not vote for them. But all the same, we need to make sure that things are done above board. So the issue of the voters' role is very important. The third issue is the issue which is so important. This one is a deal breaker. It is about the ballot paper printing and other ballot material. We will not do anything without dealing with the issue of the ballot papers and the ink that is going to be used. Yeah. On this one, we are prepared to surrender ourselves before we surrender our victory. This is so important. You know that in Kenya, they had to go to court to deal with this issue and the printing of the ballots were then, was then done, I think, in Germany or some other country. Upon the agreement, and also upon the issue of uh, the litigation done by uh, the parties there. So in our case, we want to know the pilot paper, where it is going to be printed, who is going to print it, is taking our status. We want to do a forensic audit on that paper. Is it a paper that is uh, without any other attendant um, technical sophistry, which might actually undermine the will of the people? So that will be done. We'll do our own tests and we must agree on who should print that ballot paper. The ink that has to be used, we must agree on it. All the other material to be used must be upon agreement and signed off by all the parties. Then number four is the issue of uh, the liberation of our military from the villages. De-villagizing the military and demilitarizing the villages. Let our soldiers be in the barracks waiting for any invasion of our country if there is any, and dealing with it to make sure that we protect the country. Citizens are not a foreign country or a foreign invader. Citizens are supposed to be protected by all state institutions. So the issue of the role of the military is going to be very important. And on this one, we also want the military to make an irrevocable statement to say that they will respect the will of the people. You know that in 2002, they declared that they will not salute any civilian leader. They must undeclare that declaration. Because they issued a fatwa, isn't it, SG? It must be any fatwa. <laughs> so that there is confidence amongst the people. There's the issue number five, which is the issue of the diaspora vote. What is shocking is that Mr. Mnangagwa's friends in Russia advertised in the, side of it, in the one of the publications that there's going to be uh, Russians who are here who were to vote on account of them being in the diaspora. Yet the SATI guidelines are very clear that any Zimbabwean who is in the diaspora is supposed to, to vote. Because it's in the guidelines, we are a member of the SADC. But not only that, our constitution does permit us that people who are in the diaspora are supposed to vote. But now it is limited to people who work for government. So you can't subtract people's rights because they do not work for government and they are in the diaspora. So we need the diaspora vote. Mechanisms have to be put in place to deal with the issue of the diaspora vote. We are aware that there's a court process underway, but there has to be an agreement politically on this issue. Number six is the issue of the media reforms, particularly equal access to the media. We have never been on ZBC. We are only on ZBC when they are attacking us, when we have been allegedly uh, been involved in what they call uh, uh, terrorism, or if they say you have committed acts of violence, or if they are covering my sister Kupe, who has become their darling these days. 
you know. But that's not covering the MDC. Covering the opposition, we must just have equal time in terms of uh, the messages that we have. And this is abuse of the state media. And we want this issue to be resolved. Because the electoral act, of course, does say after the proclamation and after the nomination, then that's when that has to be monitored. But we need to make sure that there's equal coverage as our point number six. Point number seven is the issue of the alignment of laws, the issue of POSA, the issue of IPA, and the Broadcasting Services Act, so that there is an amendment of the laws to align the laws with the Constitution, but also to speak to the issues we have raised. Number eight is the issue of uh, the entry of monitors and supervisors. We want to have supervisors, monitors, but guarantors. Because of what happened on the 18th of November, it's very important for there to be a mechanism of underwriting this process. So we are insisting that in order for us to be able to have a free and fair election, at least our observers have to come way ahead of time, not to come uh, maybe a few weeks, but perhaps if we are to have three months before the election, starting next month, and this is the point we have made to the United Nations, with the EU, we have even made it to the UK, to say, please, 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 we have, we have a government which has a propensity to go on its default mode of violence as a method of self-preservation. Come and help us by observing these elections way ahead of time. Number nine is the issue of violence and intimidation, particularly the abuse that we have seen in the rural areas where you have people being subjected to terrorism, being reminded of 2008, uh, particularly the issue of intimidation around uh, food which is being used as a political weapon. I think you are aware that there is the issue of uh, food, the issue of rice, the issue of the serial numbers. That is all under the gamut of intimidation and violence. Number 10 is the issue of political impartiality of our traditional leaders, including the abolition of the abuse of our traditional leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members here present, our esteemed councillors, our mayors, members of the national executives of the political parties here present, this is our document. This is our peace pledge. This is the document we are saying has to be honored. It has been inclusive, peaceful, comprehensive, free, and fair. Definitely ensure that there is no repeat of 2013, wherein we are forced to be frog marched into an election which is predetermined. We will not allow that. We will tell Mr. Mnangagwa with his um, fellow leaders that we will not accept that kind of a thing. Like I said, this election is definitely going to produce one outcome. It is the victory of the MDC alliance. There is no doubt about that. And this is why we are not going to allow them to then try and reverse the will of the people. And we count on you. We are going to institute domestic pressure, local pressure, political demonstrations, and also international pressure to make sure that we have these reforms. In fact, we have given them a window within which they are supposed to reform. If they don't, we are going to be on the streets. We are going to mobilize people. And this is not just an MDC, ZPF issue. It's a people's issue. Because the issue of resolving governance crisis, the economic crisis, the social question, is linked to the holding of free and fair election. So our resolution of the free and fair elections is our gateway to resolving the unemployment problem. So we'll tell the people that in order for us to unlock the logjam in this country, we must have a free and fair election. And this is where we count on you. And Mr. Mnangagwa, we are going to be your guests very soon. If these things are not resolved. I want to thank you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your time. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The demand that we put forward for him are so simple, are so easy. But however, he must take it very clearly that we will not, we have never been as prepared as we are this year for elections. We have gone for elections since 2000, but the opposition movement, we are prepared for the elections. Come July, the victory is certain. Come September, there will be a new government. 
led by President Honorable Nelson Samisa. This is an assurance that we give you because we're not going to play games with them this time around. Anyway, let me take this opportunity to invite Honorable Kizai to give a vote of thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Komichi. I'm sorry, uh, President Vedu, Advocate uh, Nelson Chamisa, other principals here present, uh, political leadership from the various political parties, my ambassadors Edward Pano, the civic society, honorable members of parliament, comrades and friends. Mine is a very, very uh, simple task to thank first and foremost our President Vacha Misa for articulating the 10 demands that as we approach the elections. And uh, you heard it from the President that if those demands are not given, it shall be the state versus the street. And the Papa did so Masure. And uh, Mr. President would like to assure you that we will be fully behind you as we march towards the grabbing of those demands, the 10 demands that you have uh, uh, well articulated. I would like to thank Vabiti and other presenters, Bataura Pano, Vanai Von, Maishina Javana, and also to appreciate members of the diplomatic corps who are here. Our members of parliament, we want to thank you for coming. Today is Wednesday and it's uh, question time, a very important day. But you found it very important that you should occasion yourself on this uh, very, very important program. I want to thank you and appreciate you. Our mayor and councillors who are here, uh, we really appreciate uh, your presence. Members of the civic society here present, please, we beg you to go and spread the gospel. You got the 10 points, and please go and propagate. Let's have more pressure. Let's have more pressure from the civic society. Let's talk from the same page as we move towards the attainment of those 10 demands. Uh, thank you very much, Mfundiswedu, um, at the opening prayer, and also to thank the journalists uh, for covering this uh, very important uh, uh, launch. So I want to thank also all of you for coming here and I want to say God bless you, God bless the MDC Alliance, God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you very much. Thank you.